today in our in our Studio. studios at Gov's Radio. Um, we're still, at this point, we haven't heard from the producers at the studio, but we plan to be on the air next uh, Saturday at 11 o'clock. Right. In, uh, studio. in studio. In uh, studio, live on YouTube. Uh, but we wanted to really, uh, you know, get into why, why are we doing this today? Yes, uh, exactly. And we do want to let you know that Joaquin and I are here in the hot zone, <laughs> in the epicenter of this um, whole pandemic that's touching the globe in New York City. And we're broadcasting here from our little basement here uh, right now today because New York City and state is under restrictions. That's correct. But we wanted you to know that there's good things still happening in New York and there's good news still coming out of New York. And really that's what a new day is all about that despite what's going on around us, we wanted to encourage you, wherever you're at, that there's still good news yes. coming out of New York City. That's right. right. Here. <laughs> so, uh, so for about the next 30 minutes, uh, definitely it's not going to be more than that, we wanted to kind of, uh, just kind of tell you what we're going to cover. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to talk a little bit about Psalms 91, and we're actually going to continue this series as an ongoing thing. Um, for a while. We're going to go through the whole psalm, but not today. We're just going to go through the first verse. We're going to really do, uh, for those of you who, who, are, who are Christians, who understand what expository preaching means. It just means that we go uh, break down the true meaning of the word in its original language. And I think in light of all the things that are going on now, uh, it, this is a psalm that if you've never heard it before, it's going to give you a lot of hope. That's going to give you a lot of peace and hopefully draw you a lot closer to the Lord, God, because he loves you and he sent his son to die for you. And if you know the Lord, I think it's going to enrich your relationship and give you peace in spite of all these crazy things that are going on now. Um, and then uh, Sharon is going to share some things that God had. This is fresh bread, really. God has really, uh, just in this past week, has spoken to both of us as a means of encouraging everyone. And then we're going to stay through to the end because we're going to have a closing prayer. Yeah. We're going to have a closing prayer. We're going to pray for everyone. And uh, really, the whole purpose is really encouragement. Like our show, light, sweet, and filled with hope. We want to give you hope today. And we want to give you hope that's real, that's tangible, that you can touch and feel. Perhaps not in a literal sense, but to help you find God in everyday things. Right. Okay? That's right. Absolutely. So where, no matter where you are, whether you've been walking with God and you've accepted Jesus as your Savior many, many years ago, or whether you're like, this is all new to me and God doesn't feel real to me and God seems far away, no matter where you're at, there's something for you here today. So as Pastor Joaquin said, stick through to the end and we're going to pray with everyone who wants a closer walk with this Jesus. Yes. Okay? So let's get started. So the, I titled this message, Our Hope in This Present Trouble, taking a closer look at Psalms 91. You can see the coronavirus. You know, your God, the God of everything, is more powerful than any virus, than any enemy out there. So I, I want to dive in and just go really going through the first verse. Now, 
I, I purposely did this in the King James Version. It's got a lot of these and thous and four suits and whatever. But there's a reason for it because the King James Version is actually the a virtual literal translation of the Hebrew. So it's very rich, whereas uh, I'm not going to get into all the different types of translations that are out there. But some translations are a translation of in the spirit of what the writer was trying to say. Um, and that could potentially be subject to interpretation. But I wanted to give you a literal translation and give you the meaning of it in the Hebrew so that it would really bless you. So let's, let's read. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, it's an interesting thing. The word dwelleth or dwells in the English Standard Version is a beautiful word. It means yeshab. And that word is a primitive root that means to sit down, specifically in quiet, by implication to dwell, to remain, to settle, to marry. So the picture here is being rooted, grounded, unshakable, in an unmovable position. You're in a place that no matter what you hear, no matter what reports are, doesn't phase you, doesn't shake you. You're rooted, you're grounded, you're solid. Come what may, no matter what storms come and blow, your house will stand. Um, so think of it, and it's an intimate and a beautiful relationship. So that, that's the, the comparison to a marriage when the two shall become one. But where? In the secret place of the Most High. There's a unity, if you will, a oneness between you and God that happens in that secret place. He who dwells in that secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that secret place is His love for you that was demonstrated on that cross. That is the message of grace. Grace is unmerited favor. You didn't deserve it, but God gave you what Jesus deserved, and what you deserved, he put it on Jesus on the cross. There was a divine substitution that took place on that cross. That all your sins and failures, and even your sicknesses and diseases and infirmity, he bore them on the cross. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, by his stripes we were healed. Healing is not something that is only subject to medication, or it's not something that was only for the first century. Healing is just as important as salvation. In Psalms 103, it says, Oh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives you of all your uh, iniquities and sins, and who heals you of all your illnesses and infirmity. So it's just, this, is a, this is a very practical today. That secret place is knowing that God loves you. Not because of what you do. Not because what you didn't do or lack thereof. He loves you because of his son, because you're in Christ. If you're born again, you're his child. All your sins have been removed as far as the east is from the west. And that's the beautiful, that is that secret place. That is that place when, you know, you hear these voices to tell you, oh, you know, things are going to get bad and you're going to contract this thing and you're going to die of this and that. That's the devil trying to make, to take you out of that place of security, that place that says it's going to be okay because you're my child. Right now, that's pre let's talk about that secret. That word "secret" is a word that means seder, and it means a cover. Right? Think of it as a, as a refuge, like a place to hide when trouble comes. The same word is used in Psalms thirty-two seven, where it says, "You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall encompass me about with songs of deliverance." And Psalms one nineteen one fourteen says, "You are my hiding place, my shield." I hope in your word. And in Psalms 81.7, it says, you called, I called to you in trouble. You called me in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee by the waters of Miramah. Right? So look at this beautiful imagery. All right? Here are, the, here are the promises. You call, I answer. When you're in my secret place, you will hear me. To hear, you know, a lot of people say, you know, I, I pray and I talk to God, but I don't hear from Him. You know, our minds get so cluttered with things like coronavirus and what the news is saying that, you know, God spoke to Elijah in a still small voice. He wasn't in the thunder, He wasn't in the lightning, He wasn't in the hail, He wasn't in the earthquake. He was in the still small voice. To hear the voice of God, you have to still your thoughts. And the only way to do that is to be confident in that he loves you just the way you are. Perfection is not your job. Trust and, and, uh, and surrender to the Holy Spirit, to the Lord, 
yielding to him, that's your job. That's my job, is to trust that what he says is actually true. Is to be in a place of calm and of rest so that we can hear his voice. And look at the says, I hide and preserve you. You don't hide yourself. You don't run off into your house. You don't run off and try to, you know, get disinfect yourself. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. Whatever the CDC and the government is telling you to do, we should be submission to all authority, according to Scripture. And that's fine. But your confidence is not in those things. It's in Him. Right? I will encircle you above, not with sickness, but with songs of deliverance. Songs that, 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 that celebrate the victories that God is going to win for you. Hope in my word, stay in my secret place, and I will be your shield. He's your shield. You know, at the end of the day, there are people that we've heard on the news that did all the right things, all the, everything, and they still got sick. So your, your protection and healing comes from him. It's putting your confidence in him. And you know, and this secret place that he talks about is like no other. It's better than a sterilized room, a quarantine section. Because it's the hiding place of the Most High. You're going to a place where He is. And here's the beautiful thing. If you know God and you're His child, you know where that secret place is? Right here. He lives inside of you. He has made His dwelling place inside of you. That's why the enemy can't come and tell you you're no good, uh, you're this, you're that, and the other thing, you're dirty, you're stinky. He can't do that. He can say that to you, but it's your choice to believe it. And I'm going to tell you why you're not dirty. Why you're not all sinful and all carnal and all these other things. Because if you were, God could not dwell inside of you. If you know the Old Testament, and here at Pure Grace Ministries, we know our Old Testament. The tabernacle was a holy place and it was sanctified and could not be defiled. And all through, they went through rituals of shedding of blood and all these things to sanctify it so that the Ark of the Covenant could go and rest there. You are his Ark now. You are his dwelling place. God dwells inside of you. And so, you know, lastly, I just want to talk about abiding. Abide, that word abide is beautiful. It means to stay permanently, continue to lodge, endure, and remain during the night season. See, it's not a part-time thing. It's not a, a thing where you just, well, I trust him today, and well, I won't trust him tomorrow, or I trust him one moment and not the other. You know why we do those things? It's because we don't have a, a grasp and an understanding of how much we're loved. If we knew how much God loves us, we wouldn't be afraid. The scripture says, perfect love casteth out all fear, for fear brings torment. He who fears has not been perfected in love. Love brings a perfection, a perfection that brings rest and it brings peace. And lastly, the under the shadow, it's a beautiful word. It means through the idea of hovering over. Think of it as a mother hen who covers her chicks, uh, like a pavilion that covers you from the heat of the sun in the desert, a cool, a place of shade. That is God. That is the God that loves you, that cherishes you, that cares for you, that is willing to go, who do much more for you than you can possibly imagine, and who has demonstrated his love for you on that cross. Right, absolutely. That's beautiful. I was telling, I was sharing with Joaquin how during this whole crisis over the world, how Psalm 91 has become so alive to me, so real to me, like on, and never before. Um, I mean, those of us who know the Bible and who attend church, uh, we're probably very familiar with Psalm 91, but it has taken on whole new life for me personally. And um, how are we doing with our time check before I go any further? <laughs> 14 minutes, so we're right on time for you. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about yeah. Sharon's going to give you divine soup for the soul. Yes, and yes, absolutely. And I'm, I'm going to piggyback off of you because I thought Psalm 91 <clears throat> is so powerful and so rich that we did this last week uh, in the studio on it, at Gubs Radio on a, for a new day. And I want to declare it once again over the airways. And I want you to grab a hold of it and make it your own. And wear it, wear it like a garment. This is your clothing, just claim this. Psalm 91. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High mm, yes. will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my place of safety. He's my God and I trust in Him. For He will save you from every trap 
and protect you mm -hmm. from every deadly disease. Yes. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. Do not be afraid for the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that fly by in the daytime. Do not dread the plague and disease that stalks in darkness, mm -hmm. nor the disaster that strikes at midday. You notice that? It's 24-7. The psalmist is talking about darkness, evening, midday, morning. It's 24-7 mm -hmm. protection. A thousand may fall at your side, and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. You will, if you make the Lord your refuge, as Joaquin was talking about, that hiding place, that shelter, that abiding, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no harm will overtake you. Mm. No plague, no deadly disease yes. will come near your home. Amen. That's yours today. Take it and receive it. For he will order his angels to protect you and to guard you wherever you go. If you're going to the supermarket, if you're going to work, Wherever you need to go and step outside of your house, he will order his angels to guard you and protect you wherever you go. As a matter of fact, we have a scripture verse this month. For those people who are in our church, we have a, a calendar. And every month you flip the page on the calendar and there's a new scripture verse. And it says, do not be afraid or discouraged. Do not be anxious. For I am with you wherever you go. Yes. So if you have to step outside of your house, do not step out in panic, in terror, in dread. As Joaquin said, we follow the guidelines of the medical professionals, of our government officials. We're not reckless with our lives, but we will not live in fear because of who we belong to. This yes. is your promise. Yes. And it finishes off with, the angels will hold you up in their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample on roaring lions and snakes. You will crush fierce lions and serpents. And now the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation, my victory, and my health. Yes. Psalm 91. Is there ever a better psalm for such yes, a time as this? Yes, especially for this time. For this time. Yeah. But, you know, to stay on track, you have uh, something beautiful that you saw in Isaiah. So yes, why don't very you share quickly. with us? Yeah. I'll share that with you. Our, our church, as I mentioned before, we have a calendar. And every time you flip the, the calendar, each month has a new promise from God's word. And we started off the year with this theme, that God will do a new thing. Mm. We started off the year with Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, which is a beautiful promise about God doing new things. And that was in January. Here we are in March, and the whole world has been turned upside down, yeah, literally. That's right. So I was questioning the Lord about this. I said, I don't know, Lord. You know, did, you, did we miss it? Because we really felt that he gave us the theme of, I will do a new thing. And I'm like, well, this can't possibly be it. <laughs> so let me read this promise to you. And we're going to share very briefly what the Lord said to me to encourage me about this. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Will you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And here's the key, really briefly. When we read that verse, at least when I did, mm -hmm. I've known this promise for many years. 
We always get excited and filled with hope and filled with expectation. Woohoo, God's going to do a new thing. Woohoo, God's going to open doors. Woohoo, God's going <laughs> to uh, open up opportunities and prosperity and abundance. That's how well, our mind always kind of goes there. But I kind of just skipped over something in this whole promise. Look what he says. I will even make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. You know what the Lord showed me? There will be a wilderness. Yes. There will be a desert. But I will make a way where there is no way in that wilderness. I will make rivers and give you drink where there is no water around you. And what better visualization than now? What's in a wilderness? Joaquin and I were talking about this mm. yesterday. Nothing is in no, a wilderness. That's right. It's isolated. It's desolate. It's set apart. It's separated. What's mm -hmm. in a desert? Nothing except isolation and desolation. And what is going on in the world today? We're being isolated. People are being told to quarantine, stay away from other people, isolate and shelter at home. It's a wilderness. It's a desert, literally. And so the Lord's promise to us, to the child of God in this word, is that he will make a way for you, mm. for us, in the midst of the isolation and the desolation. Yeah. He will pour out water and rivers in the midst of the desert. And so I saw that promise in a whole new way, and then it made sense to me. Yeah. You know, we were going on a walk talking about uh, that. That was amazing. And you know what was great was, what, which I'm going to turn the slide, is what the Lord showed you from this. Oh, yeah. Really quick. I know we may, if we run a, a minute or two over, please forgive us. We're trying our best to stay within the 30-minute time frame. But I have to share this picture. This photo literally came from our friend Sally. So a big shout out. Hi, Sally. Hi, Sally. <laughs> For those of you who watch the show, Sally's yeah. our studio engineer. Absolutely. So she was kind enough to send me this photo the other day from her backyard. Look what's coming up in Sally's garden in her backyard. Spring, new life is coming up. And she and this on the side is a tree right next to our house. Look what's happening. It's beginning to bud. The signs of spring, the signs of new life, the seasons remain. They're stable. They're constant. No matter what's going on around us. And I saw that and it brought me so much comfort because I said, Lord, it's comforting to see the things that remain in a changing upside down world. Spring still hope comes up. Life still comes up because God is constant. Mm, and so I was telling Sally, I said, you know what? We can find God in our gardens, especially now when we can't go to church. We can't really gather corporately as a group. And many people only look for God in church. Yeah. But you can find God in your garden. You can find God. He's everywhere, especially now. He's everywhere to be seen with. Behold the, the, the birds of the air. Behold the flowers. They don't toil. They don't labor. They don't sow. They don't reap. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Yes. So I wanted to share that with you because it was such a vivid example that life does go on. Yes, it does. Life continues to spring forward. That's right. And, you're, and the other thing, too, is that um, as we get ready to close, you had this wonderful, that the Lord gave you. Why don't you share what, what uh, this, or, or read First Peter 5, 7. Oh, uh, First Peter 5, 7, which actually sets the table for our closing prayer. Yes. Because we are not in any way making light of what everyone's feeling. There's a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, and a lot of dread all over the world, and we don't make light of that. And we don't live in a fantasy or a bubble right. where we shut ourselves off from the news. That's true. But we have a hope in the midst of the fear. We have a hope. We have an anchor. There's an anchor to our souls that yes. holds us. Amen. And it's 1 Peter 5, 7 is a great example of our anchor. This is the promise to the child of God. Cast all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns on him. That about encompasses everything. Yes, <laughs> yes. I don't. Nothing's left out yeah, there. Absolutely. Why? Here's the here's the real rub. The truth, for he cares about you mm. with deep, deep affection. affection. Amen. He doesn't just watch you from a distance. A number of years ago, there was a song from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> we used to sing it. 
God is not somewhere out there from a distance just watching, casually observing the earth fall apart. He's not just off somewhere watching you struggle and in stormy seas. No, he's here with you. He cares about you yes. with deep affection. And whatever you care about is important to him. So I'm going to turn that over to you. Yes. And, and I think it, you know, as, as we get ready to close, you know, whether, uh, you know, that old saying, whether near or far, whether you're a child of God or you, you really don't know God or God is just a deity that's out somewhere, God wants to draw you close today. Whether you're near or far, whether you're his child or you're not, God loved you enough to send his son to die for you on that cross. And he's calling out to you. You know, the misconception is that Jesus just died for the sins of the Christians. He didn't. He died for the sins of the whole world. Yes. So that God might, in the end times, be able to redeem the world back to himself. So Jesus had to die for every single sin of every single man that ever lived. And all it takes is a step of faith. Mm -hmm. James talks about faith without works is dead. We trust God. We believe God. Our, our acts should line up with that belief. Doesn't mean, like Sharon said, that we're cavalier, or that we don't take precautions, that we don't disinfect and do all the other things that they're telling us to do. By all means, because I do recall that when the devil told them, cast yourself off this pinnacle, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus turned to the devil. It is also written, I shall not tempt the Lord your God. We don't need for him to prove his love. There is the ultimate proof of his love for you. So I want to invite you, as you're watching this, to just really join with me and close your eyes. And, and just, you know, open your heart to God. Sometimes, you know, words fail us. Words cannot even... Uh, express the pain, the sorrow, the disappointment, the heartaches that we all endure. We have broken dreams, broken promises. Life didn't turn out the way we wanted to. But God is prepared to give you a new day, a fresh new start for you, a new start that can start today. So join me in this prayer. Father, first I want to pray for those who don't know Jesus to invite you to make Jesus your Savior. You know, the scripture says in Roman, what says it? The word is nigh you, even in your heart and in your mouth, the word of faith, which we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who died for all my sins, was buried and rose again from the grave on the third day. I surrender my life to you. I confess to you that Jesus Christ is Lord to your glory. And Lord, I wash myself in that precious blood that was shed for me. And I receive the free sacrifice that Jesus gave for me on the cross to make me his. And I am saved and I am your child. And Lord, I cast my cares, my worries, and my concerns, and everything that's been going on around me, I put them into your hands. Lead me and guide me, because I am yours now and forever, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I want to address you, child of God. I want to address those who know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Join me in this prayer. Heavenly Father, I know that you love me. I know that you care for me, and I know that you gave Jesus up for me. And Lord, I pray for my loved ones who may be sick right now, myself if I'm struggling with some type of infirmity, to say that Jesus, his name is above all names, and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And Lord, I give you my cares, I give you my afflictions, I give you my infirmities. Quicken my physical body right now and give it life and give it strength that I may live a long life and be here until you return and send your son for your people. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Um, we'll be doing more of these in uh, coming days and weeks. We're going to continue with Psalm 91 and continue to encourage you. And uh, we plan to be on the studio uh, next Saturday at 11 o'clock and a new day. And just as we do on our show, we're going to close with our closing song by Ken Peschel. Ken? God bless you in April, and we're looking forward to speaking to you later today. Thank you, Lord.
stories. You were faithful. Yeah.